So push and pop instructions, right? So the two tasks that your stack does, the operations that are done by the stack are to push things into the stack and to pop things into the stack, out of the stack. So the assembly instructions to do this are push and pop. So push, the syntax for push is uh, typing in your P-U-S-H, right? And notice that it works with your register, 16-bit uh, register and memory location uh, that is would be of 16-bit uh, or words. And also your 32-bit registers or your 32-bit memory locations. And also you can push numbers uh, at your 32-bit uh, level, okay? Now your pop, similar, but pop works with your 16-bit registers and 16-bit memory locations and 32-bit and 32-bit memory locations and 32-bit register locations, okay? Um, here we show an example of using your push and pop. Notice that uh, when you're using your code, you simply write down the instruction push and then the register that you're pushing onto your stack. Now, this push ESI, remember your stack is over here and it grows down. So push ESI pushes ESI onto the stack and that decreases your, uh, your pointer, okay? It decreases your pointer because now uh, you have less room, right? So now I, I put this, so now I only have this left on my stack. Then I am pushing ECX, so that pushes this here, all right? It decreases my, my pointer. And then I push EBX, so the last one. So now my pointer is pointer on that most recent location. And I have, of course, decreased my uh, pointer by 12, okay? So here's zero, four, actually eight, okay? Now we do uh, whatever needs to be done in this particular program. We're simply looking at the offsets, that's fine. And then it calls a procedure, dump memory. Now dump memory is an external procedure uh, that is used uh, sometimes. I will give you these uh, external procedures. They, they come with the book, all right? So when we get to creating our own procedures, we're gonna look at several of these. So right now, just know that the dump memory, what this one does is that it displays to screen, to your actual console screen, no longer just your Visual Studio memory uh, area or register area, but it calls your actual console screen, the little black screen in Visual Studio, and it prints out all of the registers there. Okay, so that's what this one does. Now, notice the next thing is the popping happens. Now, the popping is always in the opposite order than we than how we push our, our registers. So since the last push was the EBX, so it's down here, this is the most recent or the top of the array, of, sorry, the top of the stack. So it's gonna pop EBX first. It increments the, the, the pointer. Now we pop the ECX. So that also increments the pointer because now we have all this stuff left. And then finally we pop ESI. Now again, we have cleared the stack. So that also increments your pointer because now you have more room again, okay? Here's an example of our nested loop usage. Now in a previous example, uh, when we were moving a value into our counter ECX, the next thing that we did was to place or to move ECX, ECX into a variable that we created. I think we call, I think we call it counter. Okay. So uh, now instead of creating an extra variable, we're simply going to use the stack. Notice that here, we're pushing the address of ECX into the stack, which that address points to the number 100. Then we can reuse our counter 
again by adding that 20. Now, here we don't have to push anything anymore because we're going to go from 20, 19, 18, all the way down to 2, 1. And once it comes to 0, the last time loop 0, then we get out of our loop and it pops the address or it pops ECX, which contains uh, uh, the address of the 100. So now we come to the loop instruction and that one will reduce ECX, which now has 100 into 99. Now we go back to L1 and we push 99 into the stack. ECX gets reused with 20, 19, 18, so on and so forth until we get to one, zero. We pop the 99. The loop reduces or decreases to 98. ECX now pushes the 98. Uh, sorry, our program pushes the ECX, which holds the 98. Now again, 20, 19, 18, da 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 da. We pop the 98 and we go to 97, so on and so forth, uh, continuing our big O notation, right? Remember that uh, our big O notation, we have nested loops. So that means this will be n to the uh, square, right? n to the second power. I'm going to show you code to reverse the string. So we're going to have a, 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 a string, right? name and we're going to just add right here uh, so do right that's the end of my string then uh, we're going to use our equal remember this one is like creating a, a, a just a, a label that we're gonna use to substitute something So what this is going to do is that is uh, looking at my uh, address, right, of uh, the entire location of my string. And we're, you know, subtracting one because we don't need that. We do not need our uh, end of line right here, right, our null character. So we just want this to be exactly John Doe by omitting that last uh, null character. All right. <clears throat> we're uh, going to push the uh, name onto the stack. So let's go ahead and put the size of how many uh, letters are in my string into ECX. So this sets the counter, okay? Now we're going to move into ESI zero, okay? Because we're going to start at location zero okay so i'm going to create a label call this one label one or top one we're going to use this with our loop to be able to return to the top and here we're going to move with a zero extension because remember that we're using our uh ecx and esi we're using the 32-bit level okay but remember that our strings our strings are a byte okay so in order for this to match otherwise we wouldn't be able to move uh an 8 bit into a 32 bit we're going to be moving with zero extension okay and i use zero extension because i know that i am that the byte that i'm working with they're not negative numbers okay Otherwise, if there it were, if I was working with numbers, then we would do your your sign extension. Remember that. 
So because this is zero, we know that, you know, these are letters. We don't, we, we're not worried about a negative number, for example. So we don't need to extend the sign, all right? So now that I have this, I can now move into EAX. The first item of my array or the first letter of my array, okay? In this case, it's our first one, okay? Once we loop, it'll get the next one and so on and so forth. I'll remove that in a moment, okay? All right, I'm gonna push EAX, which is this letter, okay? So it would be the J, okay? I'm gonna push EAX. And I can increment ESI. Okay. So now we're gonna loop to L1. This will uh, decrease my counter and move back to the top. So right here, right? Um, I don't know how many we had. We had John Doe, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So this right here, eight, one, and the zero, nine, right? Okay. Uh, so this one now that we did the first letter, right, at ESI sub zero, which would be J, okay? It pushes that J into EAX, then ESI goes to one, and it loops, this now becomes a seven, and now we go to the O, and so on and so forth, okay? All right, so that takes care of uh, putting all the items of your string into the stack. So now, we need to remove them from the stack, right, by popping them out, okay? So uh, we're going to do the following. So we're gonna move Okay, again, we need to know the size again. All right. We start one more time from zero, okay? And now we're going to hop my EAX. So this takes out the most recent letter from the stack. Now we're going to move into my string at this location. What we find in the lower bit uh, of my EAX, okay? We're going to increment your ESI to move to the next letter. Okay. And we finally are going to loop back to L2. Okay. Goes back to the top. Uh, so here, remember, we pushed j o h n space d o e so the last letter was the e 
So this is going to pop E, okay? It's going to put E into sub zero and then increments to go to the next location in the string, sub one. But once it pops, the next thing that is going to pop is going to be the O. And then it's going to pop the D and then the space, so on and so forth. So now your, your string will be um, backwards, okay? There we go. There's my stop. Great. Start debugging. Okay. All right. So here I am going to be looking at my memory locations. Okay. I'm going to go to ampersand a name. Okay. So notice that here is my location where a name is stored and right here it says all the way to the end it says that it's done go okay so i'm gonna run this so the first thing that is doing is pushing everything into the stack da, 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 da. all right now we've moved to the second part of the program okay and now Notice how John, it doesn't say John anymore. It says E, right? Eondo, okay? Eondo. So we continue. And there we go. EOD space NHOJ. So John Doe, but now it's backwards, okay? Uh, it's kind of small to see, but once you run this code in your own machines, uh, you should be able to see it more closely. All right, so why must we push, why was we uh, put the character in EAX before we push it? Why can't we just push, right, uh, without put, moving it into EAX? Because remember that your characters, right, are one byte long. And remember the very beginning of the PowerPoint, it says that to push, you can push either 16-bit or your 32-bit, but the letter is 8 bits. So we have to push that into an EAX register so that uh, it takes the whole thing, right? And we pushed it with move zero extension so that it would take the whole 32-bit versus just the 16-bit. Uh, there are other instructions uh, that are co also come in handy when you're using your push and pop. Uh, right now, if you're pushing, you're, you're going to be saying push ECX, push uh, EAX, push ECI or ESI, and then you need to remember the order. Oh, now I need to pop ESI, pop, uh, what was it? EAX, pop. You see, I already forgot what I push first and pop for like obviously you're going to be typing it right but if your programs get pretty long you're going to have to go back and forth and make sure that you don't flip them by mistake right so there are some instructions that help you with this this is push fd and pop fd this one are used by the white by the way to push into the stack the your entire flags and you have push ad and pop ad and these, it's kind of like pushes uh, all of your general registers and some of your uh, other pointer registers or, or segment registers all at once. And it pops them in that reverse order so that you don't have to kind of have to keep track of what's going on. If you're only pushing one thing, like right now we were only pushing EAX, no problem. You push EAX and after you're done, you pop EAX, no big deal. But if you're using multiple registers, sometimes get that you, I mean you can get confused. So if you use a, you just use push AD, then it'll push the registers in this order. First the EAX, ECX, EDX, EBX, followed by ESP, EBP, ESI, EDI. Maybe you don't use all of them, right? But when you pop them, right, it'll pop them as EDI, ESI, EBP, ESP. EBX, EDX, ECX, and finally your EAX. So it kind of like remembers the order for you, but this is going to be the order that you're always going to use. So if this order works for you, right, 
then go ahead and use this. Uh, again, if you're using multiple registers, if you're only using one or two registers and you can keep track of which one you push first, then you know go ahead and just use push and pop. But if you're using a lot more than those registers, then I do suggest that you use push AD and pop AD. Uh, the AD uh, and pop AD are the 32-bit version. Uh, if you are only using, for example, your AX, CX, DX, then use push A and pop A, okay? That's for your 16-bit. In the next video, uh, we're going to look at how to actually start defining and using the procedures, and then we're going to move into using an external library, all right? So this is it's pretty fun. Uh, now we're going to use external libraries, so we're going to get to do a little bit more with our programs, not just looking at registers and memory locations. Uh, we're going to be using something called the Irving 32 library. So the author of the book graciously has given us a lot of external libraries that you can use to uh, put stuff into the screen, to read data from the screen, to write output, and you know, and, and also to um, even change color and have pop-up windows and stuff like that. So uh, we're gonna look that in the next uh, uh, video that we do. All right, guys. Uh, well, then that's it for uh, us now. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys. And uh, I'll see you.